Hello and welcome to this first video of the Fluid Structure Interaction course. I am Olivier Doare, professor at Insta Paris. My research focuses on the coupling between active structures and fluids. We speak of active structures when we are dealing with coupling between mechanics and other fields such as electromagnetic fields. For example, beams or plates made of piezoelectric materials or materials made of dielectric elastomers deform when subjected to an electric field. Conversely, these materials generate an electric field when they are deformed. These electromechanical couplings can be used to convert the energy of the oscillations of a structure into electrical energy or to make electroacoustic transducers that convert electrical signal into acoustic waves for instance, loudspeakers. In both cases, there is a coupling between the dynamics of the structure and the dynamics of the fluid, which must be analyzed, modeled, and understood in order to propose ways to optimize these complex systems. The examples presented here are part of the subject on which I focus my attention in my research. And they are particular cases of studies in fluid structure interaction which is the subject that will concern us in this course. To emphasize the problematic of the course, I would first like to briefly recall what is a fluid mechanics problem and what is a solid mechanics problem. First of all, in solid mechanics. Here is the numerical simulation of the response of a rectangular plate to an impact. We know that for small movement of this plate, the response can be described as a combination of an infinite number of modal oscillations. You have here the two examples of calculation if we retain 25 or 400 modes in the dynamics. To model the system independently of the fluid, we generally consider that at the boundary of the solid, the stress is zero. Everything happens as if the solid was vibrating in vacuum. But what happens if a fluid is around it? What is the flow generated by this vibration? This flow in turn exerts force on the structure. How do they affect the dynamics of the structure? Is it necessary to consider a compressible or viscous flow? Or is it okay to consider an inviscid incompressible fluid flow? These questions will be at the heart of our modeling approach. Let's now take the point of view of the fluid mechanics. When we carry out a fluid mechanics study, we are interested, for example, in the influence of an object on the dynamics of this flow. Here is a numerical simulation of the flow around two cylinders. The color levels quantify the amplitude of the vorticity. We see the appearance of vortices in the wake of the first cylinder that interact with the second cylinder. In this numerical study, the solid is simply seen as a perfectly rigid boundary for the fluid, which is equivalent to imposing a zero velocity on these boundaries, here in red. However, we know that this flow induces stresses on the wall, coming from pressure fluctuation or shear forces. In return, if the structure is not perfectly rigid, it can deform or move. It is thus necessary to understand how the structure responds to these forces and what are the consequences on the flow. Fluid mechanics and solid mechanics can therefore be strongly coupled. You know to what extent fluid mechanics can be a complex science as soon as one faces problem of instabilities, compressibility, turbulence. But solid mechanics can also be very complex if we are dealing with complex materials and geometries, large deformation or large displacement of structures. Coupling these two scientific domains only increases the complexity as well as the number of parameters to be taken into account. One of the main objectives of this course will be to identify principles to simplify the modeling by making choices on dominant phenomena in the fluid structure interaction. 
at the heart of this simplification approach will be the dimensional analysis. We will introduce dimensionless parameters that will allow us to identify the dominant terms in the equations. These may differ according to the problems encountered. Another simplification approach will consist in linearizing the equations of fluid and solid mechanics. This will allow us to use a modal approach which is very useful and powerful provided that the conditions are met for the linearization to be relevant. Once again, we will justify the relevance of the linearization by dimensional analysis. The course will be organized in three main parts. The first part will be a continuation of this introduction. We will go into the details of the equation involved in fluid structure interaction problems. We will set up the dimensional analysis to identify the different classes of problems that will be addressed later. In the second part, which will last two sessions, a first large class of problem will be addressed the oscillations of structures in a fluid at rest. We will then study different sub-problems according to whether compressibility, viscosity or free surface dynamics play a role in the dynamics of the coupled problem. And it is once again the dimensional analysis that will allow us to make this classification. We will then be able to treat different problems such as the vibration of very light speakers at high frequency the oscillations of floating offshore structures, or the interaction between a free surface fluid and the dynamics of a tank. Finally, in the third part, we will study the oscillations of structures in flows. Here again, different subclasses will be addressed quasi static aeroelasticity, pseudo static aeroelasticity, structures in actual flow, interaction with the dynamics of wakes we will highlight different phenomena such as the flutter of aircraft wings, the flutter of flax or pipes, or vortex-induced vibrations. I look forward to seeing you in the next videos where we'll go into the details of the modeling of fluid and structural equations.